here with the Metals Minute. Today is Wednesday, May 8, 2024. I want to continue our discussion today about questions to ask yourself before investing in silver. Uh, but before we do that, let's talk about uh, the metals and the prices. We've had a great week for the metals. We have uh, gold and palladium are both up 1% on the week. And we have uh, silver up 4% in a week's time and platinum up 3%. So it's been a, a good week for the metals. Also looked at the year-to-date numbers and we have uh, uh, year to date, we have gold leading the way, silver following up behind, and then uh, on the one year numbers, we also have gold leading and uh, silver next up. But uh, all the details are in the write up. Now, last week we talked about having patience to invest in silver, and we talked about the volatile nat uh, nature of silver bullion prices. And we looked at different return periods. Uh, the one week last week was minus three. Well, this week it's plus four. So that can happen in a, just a short time with silver. Uh, the one year number uh, last week, it was 7%. This week it's 8%. Uh, uh, three years was at 0%. For three years, you'd average zero. But five years... Uh, you averaged over 11% a year, a total of 78%. So that's what can happen with bullion prices. So one of the questions to ask yourself is, what type of experience do you want with your silver investing? Do you want that roller coaster uh, feel of some periods where it seems like nothing's happening over time and other periods where a lot happens in a short time? Or do you prefer to have more consistent performance regardless of what else is going on uh, with bullion prices? And the reason I ask that is there's another category of silver that you can invest in, physical silver, called proof coins. And uh, I just pulled up my own account. If you invest with the United States Gold Bureau, they have on their website an area for your account called Portfolio Tracker. So I just pulled that up for myself and it, it keeps track of everything that you purchase for you and then it shows the current balance, uh, the current value based on the, the uh, going prices for those particular items. And I, I noticed uh, that I, I thought I'm going to review that for this video and tell you what I found on the proof coins versus the bullion coins that I've purchased. Now keep in mind, this is just my own account. Uh, you'll have your own numbers and based on when you purchase and how much of each thing you buy. and So it's going to be individualized. But I'm just a, a regular guy and, and so I just look, pulled up my account. On my bullion silver, all the bullion silver that I've purchased, from the United States Gold Bureau, I have sometimes where it's showing a negative return. Uh, some silver I've bought is minus. Some silver I've purchased, bullion silver, is a plus. And overall, it's a plus 11.58% or something like that. But on my proof 70 silver that I've purchased, the average is 29%. And some of it I purchased at the same times. So over time, uh, another thing that I'll, I'll use to illustrate this are my platinum purchases. I have platinum bullion, uh, and all the platinum bullion that I've purchased is still a little bit underwater. It's at minus 16% uh, on what I've put into it. But my Proof 70 Platinum is up 28%. And some of that was purchased at the same time as the bullion platinum. Same thing for the silver. And I have a similar uh, situation on the gold. I don't own any proof palladium. I just own uh, bullion palladium. But uh, on the other three coins, uh, or the other three metals rather, uh, 
those proof coins have done better even though there's fewer ounces. So that's something you have to ask yourself. Are you willing to put $300 in a single uh, proof 70 silver coin? Or would you rather have, you know, 10 ounces of bullion for that same $300? I'm just approximately. Uh, the other thing is the performance of them. On none of my proof uh, coins that I purchased is there a minus. They're all in the plus range. Uh, and I purchased bullion at the same time of various metals. And some of those are minus, some of those are plus. So that's another question to ask yourself when you buy silver. Are you just wanting a higher quantity of silver? Or are you wanting a silver that performs more consistently over time? And my opinion is it's good to have both. It's good to have a variety of not only different metals, but some bullion and some proof uh, 70 type products, some antique metals. Those are always fun and interesting to have. So those are things to ask yourself, and we'll discuss more things soon. Thank you for tuning in. Hope you have a great day. We'll see you soon.